lesson. Let's look at the lesson. Biblical keys for success. And we have a very familiar scripture that you need to memorize. Some of you probably already know the scripture. Amen. A very familiar scripture comes from the book of Joshua, Joshua 1.8. And what does it say? This book of the law shall not what? But you shall what? Who is going to make your way prosper? Somebody say, I am. See, many times we wait, no God. Oh, God, no, 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 no. You got to do it. He said, this is your part. I'll help you, but you will make your way prosperous. And not only that, you will have good success. But how did he tell you you will make your way prosperous and you will have good success? By doing what? Thank you, Zatasha, because that's why many of us don't do, don't, we, we, we don't end up being successful because we just, we stop at meditating on it day and night. But he said more than meditating day and night. You can meditate all you want to, but if you don't do anything, we're not going to get any results. It says meditating on the word day and night, and then it says doing the word. So what we meditate on and what we read, in, and that's your worksheet, so you can write on it, make notes on it, or whatever, highlight it. We got to do it. Everybody say do. do. Let's uh, say God is looking for doers of the word. God is looking for doers. And just in case your neighbor don't know that, look at your neighbor, or sign your neighbor and tell him God is looking for a doer of the word. Yes, we have to do what the word says do. That's how we're going to be successful. I can read the scriptures. I can know every verse. I met the devil in hell know the scriptures. I told y'all, God bless his soul. I love my daddy. And if somebody somewhere didn't get a hold to him, and I don't think they did, he's going to end up in hell. And that's just the happening. He's dead, and he's going to end up in hell. Because he wasn't saved when he went in the hospital and got real sick. And so, and I didn't know about, I was in church, didn't know to actually get him saved. But let me tell you something, my daddy never went, to, you know when my daddy went in the church, where we rolled him in at his funeral. He would dress up every Sunday like he was going to church, necktie. Well, my father was a dresser anyway. He would dress up going to work and take a shower because he was a concrete, worked with concrete. After he finished his job, he would take a shower at that job. And my father would come home dressed up. Come home dressed up. I mean, men did that during the day. It didn't matter what kind of job they did. But let me tell you something. My daddy knew the scriptures. He'll come home drunk Sunday night and, and preach all over the place. I don't have to test a lot. My sister and I ain't here, but she'll tell you. So what are you saying? Just You can know the word, but if you don't do. Because there's a lot of people. There are so many people. Uh, they know the word. They know what the word says. Oh, they can quote that word. Go out there in the street to some of these people you think are sinners or they not saved or some of your buddies that you, they, they ain't get with their life of God. Man, they'll tell you what them scriptures say. I mean, they can tell you verbatim just what those scriptures say. But the bottom line, God is not looking for just somebody that can say it. He's looking for us to do the word. And so the scripture tell us, and this is our key scripture throughout this lesson. And if you don't know it, haven't committed it to memory, you need to. We got to meditate on that word, and if we meditate on it day and night, and then observe to do what we meditate on, God said he'll, you'll make your way, you'll be prosperous, and not only are you going to make your way prosperous, you're going to be of a good success, and he's going to help us do that. But the bottom line is we got to do, everybody say do what the word say do. Everybody say do what the word say do again. Come on, right quick, before we move, I didn't intend to do this, but I, I'm going to do this right quick. Uh, 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 just raise your hand, because don't, we don't want everybody just blurting out one time. T somebody tell me, raise your hand, and tell me what the words say do. Come on, come on, quick, quick. What does the word say do? The word say give. So see, you can't sit here and tell me I'm going to be prosperous and successful. Right. Amen. 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 Hallelujah. Amen. 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 Amen, Pastor. You know you're right, Pastor. Amen. Oh, I'm going to be rich. No, you ain't. You're not going to be nothing because God knows he can't trust you. Amen. No, the word say give. Right. So you ain't going to be a prosperous and no good success. You got people with money, but they so unhappy. Y'all know I'm telling the truth. What else the word say do? Come on. The word say study to show thyself approved. 
You can't read the Bible when you're in trouble because you know when you're in trouble and you're trying to read the word, yo, you ain't, all you're doing is calling words. Your mind is on the trouble. How many of you know I'm right? What else the word say do? The word say forsake not the assembly. I don't know where I mean that, that's just a trick of the enemy. You got people, I don't need to go to church. I listen, my television pastor, you ain't got no television pastor. Your people don't know you. You call them, they don't know you. They ain't gonna pray for you. Die and see if they're gonna let you bring that body there. Amen. No, they're not gonna do that. It say don't forsake the assembly. That means you need to come to church. Amen. You need to come in the building. God say come in the building. Amen. Amen. What else the words they do? He say delight yourself in the Lord. Delight just simply mean happy. Stop fussing. Stop complaining. We, that's going to be part of our, our lesson. Just get happy in the Lord. And he say he'll give you the desires of your heart. You don't have to beat God up about what you don't have Amen. and what's going on in your life. He already know that. Just get happy, and, and I know that's one of my favorite scriptures. You just go on and get happy. I'm telling you, you stop all that complaining and crying and murmuring, God will turn things around. Just, whoo, somebody need to jump up and turn around. He'll turn those things around for you just like that. What else, what else the Bible say do? When I repent, when I uh, saw the child, I acted like as a child. But when I became a man, I put away childish things. That's right. Thank you. Thank you, Lord. Say, when you're a child, you act like a child. You expect children to be children. Say, but when you come a, uh, become a man, that means you got to put away those childish things. You can't be getting mad with people. Getting the attitude. Say, so God, let me tell you something. This is not the time to be getting no attitude. I'm telling you. Yeah, well, no, no, I ain't going to say that. I ain't going to say that. I'm not going to say that. I'm not going to say that. But when I, the Lord said, no more delays, that's no more delays on those that's been righteous yeah. and blessed, and no more delays on those that's cut up and act that's foolish. Right. He said, I'm going to do it just like that. Yeah. See, many times we think we can get away with stuff because justice don't come right then. But he said, I ain't playing. He said, I am not playing with this, with the body of Christ especially, and I'm not playing the word. Do it. And I'm going to do it. This is not the time for you to get no attitude. This is not the time. And I say, it amazes me at saints. They get mad. I mean, get mad with you. Oh, I love you. Oh, you're the best thing in the world. As soon as you don't do something they want you to do. Then all of a sudden, you're a monster. This is not the time for you to get no attitude. Amen? Praise God. What else the words say do? Come on. Come on, Sister Rutley. Amen. Honor thy mother and thy father. That, that days are going to be, that they will be long upon this earth. And guess what? Many times, we, we always throwing that in children's face. Well, if you got a mommy and a daddy, that applies to you too. It doesn't matter because you're grown. He didn't put a stipulation on it. He said, honor. He didn't say children. Even if he didn't say children, you still a child of your mom and your dad. That's for everybody. You got to honor them. They may not be doing right. And you don't have to honor them in their wrongness, but you got to respect them. He said, honor them, and he said, He'll, he will increase your years upon this land. Come on, two more, two more. What else? Whoa, whoa, whoa. I see a lot of hands, so let's go for it. He said, believe the prophet, and so shall you prosper. Believe the prophet. It never seen when people don't believe, they don't believe nothing. They don't want to believe. They don't want to believe, Miss Harris. He said, believe the prophet. So shall you prosper. I'm going to just throw something in. It say, give to the prophet, and you get a proper reward. Amen. I ain't giving them nothing. Forget them. They better go get it from somewhere else. What else the words say do? Come on, Ms. Vermel. It said, say, say that again. Okay, it tell us about asking. If you don't ask for anything, you're not going to get anything. Come on, Brother Charles. Let your light so shine before the world that men may see your what? Good works. Not for it's time for Christians to start letting their light shine. That's why many people don't want to come in because they see all these dull lights of Christians. And they hear all this stuff that we say. <laughs> they, I, you, they may not say it to you, but I don't want what you got because that's not going to help me. I saw some other hands because I don't want to skip anybody before we go to our lesson. Come on, Geneva. It, 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 talk about judging. Many times we... It, 
we got bamboo poles, telegram poles in our eyes. <laughs> Y'all know. Miss Denise, I'm right on it. And then we talk about somebody else. Hey, that's, you better get them out of your eye. And then you can tell somebody else something. But then they say with the same judgment that you judge somebody, that's how you're going to be judged. And that's why when somebody do something, listen, don't try to beat them up because you don't know. Don't ever say what won't happen because that same thing may happen to you. And then you're going to want everybody to be so sensitive to you. But then if you want them to be sensitive to you, we need to be sensitive to somebody else. And then people will understand during that time. Then we come on, Regina. Okay, the word says rejoice. This is the day God given us. You may not like what's going on in this day, but listen, God gave us this day. You are alive. You took time to come to church. You took time to comb your hair, to take a bath, I hope, brush your teeth, and do all of that wonderful stuff. And that's all right, you got it. So you may as well what? The church is not a place for you to come walking up in with no attitude. You don't. <laughs> but thanks to God, I'm gonna say this. It, you done took your time. It take me time to comb my hair. I started coming here Wednesday night. I just took my head combed all over my head like an afro. And I said, you know what? I'm going to church just like this. And I got dressed, I put some makeup on my face, and I walked through the house, the pastor ain't say a word. <laughs> <laughs> Then I walked back through the house, Mama Walker, and I looked at me again. And I said, no, they ain't ready for this. <laughs> then I went back in my room and looked at myself, and I said, no, I ain't ready for this. <laughs> <laughs> so that's why I had my, a little uh, Afro puff back there. I just put some gel on it, Levette, and say, oh, no, girl, you ain't ready for that. Right? Not right now. <laughs> so I said, I put a ponytail. But it takes time to get dressed. You know, say, what's the sense of coming in with attitude? The Bible tells us that we got a problem with somebody. We ought to go to that person. Straighten it out. Life is too short. And when that person closed their eyes, there's no sense of you trying to get nothing right. It's over. Look at your neighbor and just tell them be happy. Listen, in situ if I ask how many of us got challenges in situ where everybody here raised their hand, their feet, their toes, their fingers, we all got them. But guess what? You can be happy. And if not, that's when you come to church. You may, you may have trouble at home, trouble on the job, but I'm telling you, trouble shouldn't be in the church. You all baby, come to church, somebody say, and be happy. And be happy, praise God. So listen, we, we, we said all of those things. Why? Because that's what the Lord said, do. We got to be doers of the word. We got to do what the word say do. We got to do it. And I'm just going to throw out the gill because we're going to get to that. I know sometimes people do things and you want, the, the flesh want to get them back. But if we want to be prosperous and we want to be of a good success, you know what? We got to forgive them. And I'm telling you, when the Holy Spirit is in us, he'll convict us. I mean, sometimes we, we get things happen. You just say, you know, I'm through with that. Anybody ever been there? <laughs> and then, you know, he'll give you a chance. That's what I love about God. I love God because he, he treats me so good. He'll give me a chance to settle down. And he said, now you know that ain't going to work, don't you? <laughs> Anybody know what I'm talking about? Let's go to the introduction. We're talking about biblical keys for success. And success is basically what? Favorable or desired, Favorable or desired outcomes. How many of you want your desired outcomes? Not just any outcome, but your very desire. And the Lord told us, he said, delight us ourselves in the Lord, and he'll give us the what? The desires. desires of our heart. And then there's another scripture that says, it's his good pleasure to give us his, the desires of our heart. So in, a, in other words, God said, I take delight. I mean, I'm just so happy to give you what you desire. It's a favorable, our desired uh, outcome. And then let it be, it says, in the world, almost anything is justified uh, for success. And y'all know I'm telling the truth. In the world, because we're talking about biblical success. And so we had to address this. In the world, almost anything is justified for uh, success. People will do what? Steal. What else? Lie. Manipulate the law. What else? That should be mistreat others. You can, that's a typo there. Mistreat others and what? Do it. And that's the truth. They'll do anything. And so they consider it as success. 
But we're not talking about the world definition and the way the world look at success. We're talking about biblical success. Because how many of us know the blessings of the Lord make you rich and ask no what? Sorrow. See, we talking about success where there's no sorrow. Well, I don't have to be looking behind my bike. I got it. But boy, I know I didn't get it right. And I'm wondering when they coming back at me. Or every time I see the popo, I'm nervous. Okay, y'all know what I'm talking about. Y'all, let, let, me, let me go and make it plain. You know when you speeding down the road, and I'm at you going by 80 or 85? As soon as you see the police, you, all the state trooper. Now, thank you. Help me out this morning. But you don't want to be looking over your shoulder. You want to know you got this thing right. And you don't want nobody throwing anything up in your face. Look at letter C. It said, God's success always start where? Touch yourself. It starts on the inside. It starts on the inside of a person. And then what does it do? It works its way on the what? Outside. It works its way on the outside. So if it starts on the inside of a person, that means we got to work the inside. See, God's way of success starts on the inside. Us getting into God's word, doing what God said, and just let God do the work. Let's look at part two. It says, even as your what? Somebody say, even as your what? Okay, third John uh, uh, two says, beloved, I wish above all things that you what? Would prosper and what? Even as your what? Underline soul prospers. See, that's the word of God. God say he want number one, we got to know, but you're on a shadow of a doubt because you got people sick and they think, you know, God made me sick. No, he didn't. Oh, this punishment from God, this is what God want me to No, God, no, 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 no. God said he wished above all things that we be in good health. He sent Jesus, he let Jesus be whipped so that we could be healthy. Amen. 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 Said by his stripes we're healed. So it said he wished above all things, this is the will of God for our lives, that we would prosper. He don't want us broke. Amen. He don't want us poor. The king, I'm going to say it until somebody catch it. The kingdom of God need money. Amen. The kingdom of God need money. And you ask, Pastor, is the church all right? We need money. Yes, we need money. And until Pastor stand up here and say, like Moses told the people, don't bring no more money. The kingdom of God need finances. That's how the kingdom of God is going to move. Right now, I'm in my heart. We were in Bible study, and Pastor was talking, and I'm asking God, I'm praying, show us a way, God. He told me some things in our prayer this morning, that Jacksonville is number one in youth defenders in jail. Jacksonville is number one in the whole country. Now, you got all these. You got Chicago, California. You got Miami, New York, New Jersey. You got all these places where you know crime is. And here we are, number one in youth, 542 youth in prison, in jail. 592. And then those girls was in Jacksonville. Oh, because I said, if those girls that drug their mom and daddy because they couldn't get on the computer, if they're in Jacksonville, we added them to the list, then we some struggle. And I said, God, you got to show us. Show us a way. See, you can't, oh, they just so bad, they didn't this, parents didn't do that. Forget the parents, because some of those parents, you can't teach something you don't know. Some of them parents ain't never been to church, don't have no church background, don't know nothing about God. It's the church responsibility. And we can't look at stuff and hear stuff, Minister Harris, and ignore it. I'm telling you, I want those children. See, some of y'all looking at me. And I say, God, I want us to be able to help those children. And it can be done. It could be done. You know, I was in prayer this morning, just meditating, Pastor. And I said, you know what? God can move where we can build a youth center. These children need a safe place to go. They need Christian men, real men. They need real men and real women talking to them, encouraging them, letting them know what they can do. And we can change their lives. I believe that. I'm asking God, God, give us a way. We can, we can build a youth center for those kids. But how many of us know it's going to take finances? It's going to take finances, and we can do it, and I'm asking God to do it. We cannot have that many children locked up in no jail. 
That's too many children right here in our county. We number one, saints. Something's wrong with that picture. We, we just, oh, we just praying and going about our daily business. You can't, you can't hear that kind of stuff. I can't hear that and just think, I, I, and just keep moving on. No, we got to do something. God expect the church to do something about it. Well, I move, but God expect the church to do something about it. And I'm praying and asking, right, God, show us, give us a way, give us favor where we can, instead of them children being sent us to jail, because I heard a pastor in Canada do that, and she did it, and those kids are successful. She sent all of them to college. I mean, they got master's degrees, doctor's degrees, and they're doing all kind of stuff right there in Canada. A black pastor. I say, God, fix it where they can be sent us to church, sent us to Joshua. Instead of building jails for them, let them build a youth center that we can help these kids and train them. A lot of them just simply need training. They need direction. They need somebody around them. They need to see some real men that care, saints. And I'm not fussing, but I'm telling you, this thing, this thing is pulling, it's pulling, and God wants us to do something. It's time for us to stop being so busy. We're so caught up in my stuff. Don't you know what you make happen for somebody else? God will make happen for you. God expects us to do something. Come on, Sister Vermel. Right. So it's not going to be one person. We can do it. I know. With the kids, she used to, well, some of them don't know, but she used to keep those kids that were troubled. And, and she would bring them to church, and a lot of those kids, those kids' lives changed. We can do something. That's two minutes. And I guarantee you, 90% of those kids are boys. The devil know what he's doing. Saints of God, we got to get a burden for something other than us and our stuff. And that's the truth, and I'm going to move on that. It says, even as our soul prosper, God want us to prosper. He want us to be in health. He want us to prosper. He want us to prosper, not only materially, but he want us to prosper inside. Because when you start prospering inside, you got, that is nothing like the peace of God. When you prosperous inside, that means the peace of God, and you ain't caught all up or what somebody else did, or they didn't do this to me, or they didn't let me do he come here, and so now I'm mad. Look at your neighbor and tell him, get over that foolishness. This is a new year. Look at another day, tell him, get over it. This is a new year. This is a new year. Get over it. Look at somebody, tell them, get over it. Get over it. It's over. You didn't come, you didn't go. It's over. So get over it. Number one, it is God's will for you to do what? And what else? And what else? That's the will of God. You don't have to, oh, Lord, if it's your will, let me prosper. Oh, Lord, if it's your will, let me succeed. Oh, Lord, if it's your will, let me be in here. You don't have to ask the Lord if it's his will. He done already told, him it's, told us it's his will. That's what he desired. He want us to prosper. He want us to succeed. And he want us to be in good health. Number two said, God loves you and wants to do what? He want to take care of us more than we can imagine. But we got to get up and do something, saints. And, we, and not only that, we got to believe that. We got to say, don't nobody love me. God love you. Yeah. So what? If, listen, you don't depend on the, no people on this earth to love you because they'll love you today, Mama Walker, as long as you do what they want you to do. Right. And them same people that tell you they love you today, I, we used to say tomorrow, but ain't no tomorrow. The same day. The same day, them people get an attitude with you. Same day. Same day. Not, not tomorrow. So we got to trust God. No, if nobody else loves us, God does. Amen. Look at number three. It says, God's success starts where? On the inside. It says, even as I so proud. See, you can't, you, if you're going to be successful with God and you're going to get things, get things wrong, you got to get that mess out of you. Amen. You got to get it out of you. It's time. Look at your neighbor. Tell them, get rid of the attitude. Look at another neighbor. Tell them, get rid of the attitude. Look at another neighbor tell him, it's time for you to get rid of the attitude. And look at another neighbor tell him, it's time for you to grow up. If they're a man, tell him, you're a grown man. 
If they're a woman, tell them you're a grown woman. Tell them grow up. And I'm just as serious as I can be. Grow up. It's time for us to grow up. Ted said it. When I was a child, I act like a child. But when I became a grown man, I put away that childish foolishness. And it's time for us to grow up. You ain't going to be able to move. You ain't going to be able to do nothing. You got many people, why am I still in here crying to God? Why am I still? Because you won't grow up. You get an attitude. As soon as somebody don't do what you want them to do, you get mad. You walk around with an attitude, nasty, snobbish, don't know how to talk to folks. That's right. That's right. Oh, yeah, I'm preaching. You mad. You all upset. Bottom line is you ain't going nowhere. You're going to keep going around that same old mountain. That sa- you're going to stay in that same hut right. until you get it together. Amen. <laughs> Tell somebody this is a new day. Amen. You need to get it together. You ought to get tired of the same stuff. You ought to decide, hey, things are going to change here, and the change is going to start right here with me. And change don't start on the outside. It has to start on the inside. Inside, he wants our soul to prosper. We got to be at peace and you can't let the devil, because I'm telling you, the devil, will t- he'll tell you all kind of foolishness. He'll tell you all kind of stuff. And I'm telling you, I, I was in a session, and this young lady, uh, I was at a Christmas party, actually. <coughs> and this young lady said something, you know, and I just kind of took it to heart. I didn't say anything. But I'm telling you, since she said that, I've been seeing it so much. And she said, you know, she said that she was on a, on a consecration. And she said, you got, we, the Lord said, we got to pray and we got to, I mean, just pray and really watch ourselves even more than ever this year because there's a spirit this year, you're going to see a spirit of rebellion like never before. And I'm telling you, since she said that, that's the truth. I'm seeing pe- people just rebelling, they doing all kind of foolishness. And that's the truth. And I ain't talking about outside the church, I'm talking about right in the church. I'm talking about in the church. Just a spirit of rebellion. The Bible says rebellion is as the sin of what? And you better, you got to watch that. See, I ain't, I ain't got time to watch you because I got to watch myself. I'm watching myself. Lord, don't let me be caught in no kind of rebellion. I don't let me do nothing. God, I got to keep this thing right. I got to get this thing right, and I got to keep this thing right. I got to be right, God. So I don't want to, don't let me get caught up in no kind of foolishness. I don't want to be caught up in no kind. You got to watch yourself, because before you know it, it's not as far-fetched as you think it is. And ever since she said it, I done seen it. I mean, just rebellion, just, just for no reason, just rebellion. Just rebelling. You, be, you got to be careful. Because there's, I remember Korah and a whole group that rebelled against God. And God opened up the earth and he swallowed them up. And don't think he won't do it today. So success, God's success starts on the inside. He wants our soul to prosper. And that's why we got to have a prayer life. We got to have a communion life. We got to have time where we talk to God. Say meditate on the word day and night. That means you, uh, you can't go all day long with your Bible open because some you got on jobs. That's why you need to come in sessions like this and you need to come to teaching because bef- you, you may not realize it, but word get in you and you, you memorize those. You didn't start out to memorize. You didn't say I'm going to memorize the scripture. Just from hearing it, it gets in you, and you may be working on your job. You can be on your job. You can be in there with those children, but you can still be talking to God. You can be on whatever job you own. You can be riding down the street, but you can be meditating on that word. You can talk to God. You can meditate on that word day and night, no matter what. And how many of us know when you really, when you take that time to spend time with God and meditate on that word, God won't let nothing surprise you. Do I have any witnesses in here this day? He will warn you. He may not tell you exactly what's going to happen, but he'll let you know. He'll have you ready. So when you go there, you won't just explode. Amen. So we can do that. We can meditate on the word. And we can do what the words say do. No, I don't care what happened. No, I'm, you're not going to bring me down to where you are. So even as our soul, he wants our soul to prosper. We're talking about keys for success. You want to be successful. You got to let your soul prosper. You can't have all that foolishness wrapped up in you. And then don't let people dump garbage on you. 
I don't care if it's your mama. Because sometimes it's family members. And we think, oh, because that's my mama, that's my sister, that's my brother, that's this. You can listen to that foolishness. When they need to be shut up, you need to tell them, listen, I need for you to be quiet. You need to shut them down. They don't want to shut up. You can dismiss yourself from them. And see, we got to stop being afraid of people. Many times we're afraid of people. You need to tell them, you need to be quiet. After a while, you know, you just get tired. You need to be quiet. And then we be quiet, you can dismiss yourself from that. And if they're in your place, you tell them, I'm sorry, love you, but you got to go. Amen. You got to go because I am not going to have that. You can't let, because all it takes is, I don't care what, you don't have to be thinking about something, but all it takes is one little negative seed. And I done seen this happen over, and, I mean, I've seen it happen over and over and over. And then they, they poison you. Then they get right, you gone out the door. And they still here. And you messed up. You can't let people put foolishness in your ear. When you, you know, we know when it's not right. We have to tell them, listen, you need to be quiet. <laughs> God not pleased with that, and I'm, I'm not listening to that. I'm not going to partake of that. We got to let our soul prosper. Your soul prosper. You got to be at peace. There may be challenges around you, but I'm telling you, God going to give you peace. You may have had challenges. I ain't lay awake. I got some things I need God to do. I mean, yesterday. But guess what? I went to sleep last night. I had me a good night's sleep. Matter of fact, Pastor had to wake me up this morning. He said, baby, it's a quarter to eight because I don't sleep that late. I wanted to say, can I lay here a little bit longer? But I knew I had to be with God and what I had to do. You understand what I'm saying? The bottom line is we got, we got to be at peace. We got to know who's in control. Amen? And then look at part three. Spirit led. Somebody say spirit led success. Spirit -led success. Somebody say spirit led success again. Spirit -led. See, because there's spirit-led success, and then there's flesh-led success. Let's turn to James, the fourth chapter, real quick. So you don't want nothing of the flesh, because how many of us know it will disappear? You don't want no flesh. And I, you don't want no flesh, because you got people out there. Listen, there are churches. See, sometimes we're all amazed over these churches and what they're doing, and that's why we can't do it. There, do you know that there are businesses now? They're businesses, businessmen. They don't care nothing about no God. They ain't saved. They have gotten together and they financing churches and they name them and they got them all over the country. They give them the name. They'll call a preacher. Okay, you're going to be the pastor here, but the site pastor, but you ain't got no control. You do what we tell you to do. Some of y'all look at me like, wow, we better get our head in the game. That's real. And we think it, and they tell us, oh, what we, oh, this, we doing this, we doing that. Because you got businessmen with money that have put it together, and they ain't got no control. This thing is about, them, about money for them. This is a business deal. It has nothing to do with God. And I just don't believe God's pleased with that. It has nothing, absolutely nothing to do, absolutely nothing to do with God. So I'm not talking about flesh that said, see, because when them people get tired of you, somebody push you up or promote you, when they get tired of you, they get mad with you, they'll take you right down. But see, if that promotion come from God, God ain't, no, God ain't going to let them take you down. Before he let them take you down, he'll put you even higher. Amen? Look at James. We're at James, the fourth chapter. Look at verse number 13. Verse 13. It says, come now, you who say, today or tomorrow we will go to such and such a city, spend a year there, buy and sell and make a profit. Whereas you do not know what will happen tomorrow. For what is your life? It is even a vapor that appears for a little time and then vanishes away. Instead, you ought to say, if the Lord wills, we shall live and do this or that. For now you boast in your arrogance. All such boasting is evil. Therefore, to him who knows to do good and does not do it, to, uh, to him it is a what? It is, a, it is a sin. So we, there are people that prosper and they, they so-called what the world call them successful because of fleshly success. But we're not talking about the world way of success. We're talking about God's way of success. Look at, and, and it says James 4, 13, 17 warns us against self-centered success. We can't be talking about, well, I'm going to do this and I'm going to do that and I'm a self-made person, and I'm, 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 no. 
How do you know that's in the will of God for you to do? Amen. We got to put our, we got to decide, God, I want to be, in, this is what I desire to do. But God, if this don't line up with your will, I don't want to do it. Right, right. And we got, and we have to put, I get ourselves in that position. Because sometimes we want to do stuff because we see other people do it. But God may have given them the grace. You know, it, it amazes me. I said it in Bible study. Everybody in my family can read music, including my grandson. They can read music. And everybody in my family can get on that keyboard and get in that organ, and they can uh, play some sounds that you know. Now, if I get on that keyboard or that organ, you're not going to understand. Absolutely. I might still know. They taught me in college. I had to take elementary music. So I played with one finger. All I was trying to do is get my grade, get my A. I didn't care. They didn't care how many fingers I used. Three blind mice. That was my son, wasn't it, Miss Clayton? Boy, I, I learned that thing with that one finger. Three blind mice so I could get my A out of elementary music. But the, other than that, I don't know. I don't know that. It amazes me when I see people, when I see Minister Mike Dial over there running up and down them keys, them black and white keys. How do you know where to go, what to go? But how many of us know God has gifted everybody with various gifts? They may be able to do something that I can't do, but there may be things I can do that they can't do. And it's the same. God has given all of us various gifts. And what he said, use the gifts that I've given to you. But I can't go over there. Listen, Minister Mike Dial, you don't need to get on the keyboard today because I'm going to play today. Church will be out. <laughs> you know what? Seriously, we went to a service one time, and do you know this man? Where's my sister Frankie? This is no lie. No, 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 no. This was before your time, baby. There was. I, I, I knew you was going to say that. We say that to each other. There was no time before our time. This, was, this happened to be before your time, sweetheart. Before you showed up, Romeo. <laughs> Clock started. <laughs> <laughs> we went in this church service. This is no lie. We used to um, uh, had to go and sing, do all this stuff. My mom made us do this stuff when we were little. But anyway, this man told me, I'm going to play. He got on. Do you remember that? That man got on the piano, and he just started banging. This is no lie. And I'm telling you, there was a lot of people in that church. And I said, well, is something wrong with my hearing? <laughs> Did this man really do this? This man just got on the piano, and he just started banging stuff. He just started banging. And he, I mean, he was serious. He wasn't playing. This was no joke. The bottom line, and I, now I was young. Somebody <laughs> said she was young and unsaved. <laughs> so you know about what we did. Teenager, I don't need to say no more. You know what we did. It, it was over. Church was over in that place. Nobody understood. Well, un absolutely nobody understood what was going on. I, he didn't understand. I don't know what happened to him. I guess the devil made him do that because that wasn't the Lord. That wasn't the Holy Spirit right there. Well, the, but the bottom line, seriously, we, we can't say, I can't say I'm going to do that and I know I can't. You understand what I'm saying? Now, I know later I can ask God, God, will you gift me, show me how to play, show me how to read music or whatever, if that was something I want to do. But we, we got to know, listen, God, I'm going to do this if it's your will. Now, like I said, you ain't got to ask him, Lord, let me prosper if it's your will. Let me be in health and all. You know that. But there are things, many times, we say what we're going to do. We don't even know. We don't even know if we're going to be here the next hour. Right. We can make plans. And if it's God's will, this is what I plan to do. But I don't know. I pray I am. You understand what I'm saying? So we have to be careful about that. It is God's will for you to prosper, succeed, and be in health. Look at number two. Who will be directing your activities and your success? Is it you? Or is it who? You got to look at that, Megan. You got to decide, am I going to try to do this on my own or am I going to let Christ direct me? And if you let Christ direct you, and, and we're at a stopping point, so you're going to make a note there. If we let Christ direct us, I'm telling you, we'll go in the right direction every time. It can't be so much of what we want, because we may be going in a direction, saints of God, and this is the truth, that... That may God may not want you to do. You, you've heard my testimony when we first uh, started the, the actually the grade school and the Bible teacher got sick. And one person, one teacher told me, well, Pastor, you need this. Y'all, this is uh, the church is in the school is in your church. You need to teach Bible class. Now, here God done brought me out of teaching. So I went in there, you know, and at first it was exciting. It brought back old memories and it was exciting. 
But then I start feeling uncomfortable. And then the Lord told me, he said, why are you here? I didn't tell you to come back. I took you out from teaching those kids. You did that. I didn't tell you to do that. He said, now you done started with these kids. I want you to finish out this year, but you go in there and you tell Miss Harris that you will not teach this Bible class. I, it doesn't matter. The teacher can teach it. The, anybody can teach it. But you, will. he told me that. And you've heard me say that many times. He said, I didn't tell you to do that. So just because I could teach the Bible don't mean I was supposed to be teaching. In that setting. And so what am I saying? The point is we got to make sure God, the bottom line is, is that God, I want to be where you want me to be, doing what you want me to do. And God has to be in the midst of that. And when he's in the midst of that, we'll be successful every time. Praise God. Give God a hand of praise and let's stand on our feet.